What's up, St. Louis? It's Luke Farrell, co-host and founder of the STL Bucket List Show. Uh, we've been putting this show out for the last 75 weeks straight, and we're going to continue that and highlight the people, places, and events that make St. Louis special. The STL Bucket List Show is proudly presented by the Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis. The Regional Arts Commission is the largest public funder of arts and art programming right here in the city of St. Louis. They believe that every artist, organization, and generation in our region believe that life is better when art is around us too. Um, and we happen to believe the same thing. Um, they also just launched an amazing um, website called stlouisarts.org that highlights public art, live music, and all things art in St. Louis. This episode specifically is presented by The Wine and Cheese Place, which has been locally owned and operated since 1982. The Wine and Cheese Place has five different St. Louis area locations in Town & Country, Creevecore, Kirkwood, Clayton, and their newest location, Spirit Wine & Craft in South City. The Wine & Cheese Place and Spirit & Craft carry 5,000 plus wines, 1,200 beers, 1,000 whiskeys, hundreds of cheeses, and plus a great selection of specialty food and gifts. They support local whenever possible too. If you go into their sections, they always have a made in STL section. Plus, their staff is educated and they know just about everything you need to know about spirits, wine, um, and even cheese. So stop into one of their five St. Louis area locations, or you can go directly to their website and order online at thewineandcheeseplace.com. If you want to hear about St. Louis, tune in to the Bucket List Show Weekly. Hear what Marissa and Luke say. It drops every Wednesday. Got a dope new guest every single week. Buckle up for the ride. Who's it going to be? Who's on the show today? They rep St. Louis. What to do in the loo on a late night, or maybe what to do on a date night. Yeah, bucket list has you covered, they know what's going on, what's going on, they'll give you, hey, 18 different things to do, or 19 if you need one more to choose, yeah. This city, city, city is a place we call home, a place we call home, yeah. What's up, St. Louis? Thank you guys for tuning in and joining us on episode 80 of 80. the SDO Bucket List Show. I'm your host, Marissa Farrell. And I'm your other host, Luke Farrell. And uh, we really couldn't do 80 episodes uh, without my guy Matt in the back cutting up every single episode, putting it on Spotify, Apple. Um, but of course, you guys that listen and tune in and really our main core mission um, stays the same throughout. It's to highlight the people, places and events that make St. Louis special. Um, and that's what this podcast is all about. So, of course, I got to shout out my friends over at the Wine and Cheese Place with five St. Louis area locations. Um, anytime you're going to a party, anytime you're getting a gift for someone, head over to the Wine and Cheese Place for not only the best sele selection, mm -hmm. but the best prices, too. That's right. Um, so got a very special guest today. Um, this person has done a lot of work for our business in the past, um, but more as of late, uh, we have one of the hottest murals in all of St. Louis located inside of our office, um, which is in the Grand Center Arts District. Um, and there, it's, there's no place like here. Um, yeah. and right people now, people love it. They like want to come in and stop by and yeah. take pictures. People so. look through the windows. Well, actually, funny story is a bunch of people were looking through the window, found out it, who, it was his family, and yeah. I was like, well, "You guys want to come in and look at it?" I didn't even know it was your family until I saw. I think it was like your cousin or somebody looked exactly like you or something. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> all, all, me and all my cousins look a lot alike. So they were like looking in the window. I was like, "Guys, feel free to come on in." Um, so yeah, the the uh, the mural it is you know the exact dimensions of it. So if yeah, you want to just talk about the mural a little bit, let people know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's 176 square feet, I believe, um, which is like 16 by 11. I'll check my math, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, well, no, uh, no, don't check. No, your math. not a math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate math. Um, <laughs> me yeah, too. yeah. So it, it was a great opportunity. I mean, when Luke hit me up, like, like I said, I had done things for Luke in the past and your guys' team, and, and was obviously really familiar. And then um, he hit me up and was like, "Dude, I have this huge blank wall in this office that we're moving into," and and the way my brain works is like I don't really like to do things if um, if there's too much of a an agenda to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing that kind of drew me to to this project was you were kind of just like, dude, it's literally a blank canvas, mm -hmm. like it's literally a blank wall. Yeah. He was like, I trust you, like just go crazy on it. I think mm -hmm. it's like exactly what you said. Yeah. <laughs> so that like inspires me, and that like makes me want to like kill it, you know, mm -hmm. because you're basically like, look, I trust you, and then I'm like, okay, well, if you trust me, like I'm gonna kill it for you, right? You know, so. Yeah. And it's amazing, guys. I mean, it's uh, 
tell us a little bit more about the piece and like your vision behind it because I think I have a separate meaning from it. I've been telling people, I'll tell you what I tell yeah, people yeah. and then you tell me what. No, what that's you think. totally cool. It's yeah. like it's actually funny because I posted on um, Reddit the other day mm-hmm. on like the St. Louis subreddit and it kind of like popped off and like all these people were commenting on it and stuff and like talking about the different meanings and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so the original piece is called like There's No Place Like Home, which like obviously is a riff of like um, The Wizard of Oz, the whole like midwestern um you know kind of just like home is where the heart is and like it doesn't matter if you're from you know new york or la or bangladesh or you know wherever um to me like st louis is home because like obviously i'm from here but the amount of like friends and family that i have here is like why it's so hard for me to leave here and like it'll be hard for me to like leave here eventually so that's the whole thing is like there's no place like home like obviously it's not a perfect place like Nowhere is perfect, but St. Louis has a lot of problems, especially like the downtown area. Mm -hmm. Um, But we have the Arch, which is like, excuse me, one of the most beautiful examples of like modern mid-century architecture ever. I mean, the fact that that structure exists is like mind blowing to me. And I think like we're all a little numb to it because we grew up and like you see it when you're a little kid. Mm -hmm. But for me, like and what it represents, right, the gateway to the West, like without St. Louis, America is not America as we know it, like with the people coming through St. Louis and expanding westward and like the impact that our city played on like the entire world. It's just crazy. And like the fact that um, it's just like not all rainbows and butterflies, you know, like there's a lot of things that I said, like are not nice about it. And like, I'm just trying to paint that picture for people. That's like, there's no place like here and there's no time like now. Mm -hmm. And like everything is based on your perception of how you see it. So like, you know, turning the rainbow into the arch or whatever. And like the flowers on the ground is like, it's just a way of like seeing where you're from and being proud of it and like being happy for it. And that was kind of the inspiration is just like, I wanted your team and I wanted like everybody, help, everybody who came in there to feel like inspired and, mm-hmm. and, and just feel good about it really. Yeah. I mean, we feel so inspired. We moved all of our desks yeah. off the wall. <laughs> like, cause I was talking, I was talking to you and I was like, yeah, man, I, we were thinking about putting a desk here and now we like moved it off into the corner yeah. and now we're just like all in a line to where it's like, right when you walk into the office, there's a de- there's a conference table and then it's just the mural. Yeah. Um, so I've been telling people like, they're like, okay, what does it mean? Like this and this, I just keep it real simple. I said, the yellow brick road leads right. to the arch yeah. and what the colors and all that do is, is just, it feeds into opportunity. And the quote I like more than more than anything, because when we are there, we want to feel like there is no place that we would rather be than here. Um, And really the time is now. And I say this quote on every single episode is, if not us, then who, if not now, then when. Um, And that's kind of what I feel when I see it. But the yellow brick road leads to the arch, that street right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Samuel Shepard drive leads straight into Keener Plaza and the arch. Yeah. yeah. So if you really like, if you did like a 3d, like x-ray thing, it would actually be a direct line to the arch. Yeah. Maybe I, it'd be a little bit off, but. <laughs> well, I remember you showing me that, which is crazy because that was obviously not like planned or whatever. Right. Like it just happened. I love, that's another big thing too for me. Like when things line up like that, it's like a sign of yeah. like, just go with it. Right. And like when I had originally done that piece, I, I think I told you this story, but I used to live on a rooftop in like Midtown Grand and we would always just watch the weather and watch these storms come in and all this. And there was one day where like this beautiful rainbow, like well, okay, I should say this. The night before I drew that picture, mm-hmm. like there's no place like home and I'm I'm in the right-hand corner and like I just drew it because I was feeling really inspired. Mm-hmm. Literally the next day, like I'm not even joking, 24 hours later, this giant rainbow came like right over our place and I, I made my friend take a picture of me and I have a picture of me standing there in the exact position that I drew like the day before mm-hmm. and that just gave me like goosebumps and then when it came time to do your mural, I was like, that's a sign. Like it just like is meant to be like yeah. move forward with it. So yeah, crazy. <laughs> crazy story. That is wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're gonna take it back a little bit. You said mm-hmm. you're from here. This is your home. Yep. So talk to us about just growing up in St. Louis and what St. Louis exactly means to you. Yeah, definitely. So um I I absolutely loved like growing up in St. Louis and, and when I have kids someday, like even if I'm living somewhere else, I would love to come back and like bring my kids mm-hmm. to grow up in St. Louis because I think you learn a lot being from here. Like, of course you learn a lot being from anywhere, but like, Mm -hmm. it's just such an interesting place to me. But, um, yeah, like my childhood was kind of like, it was unique because my parents are separated. So I I lived in a lot of different households, like all over the city, which is one thing like I pride myself on. So like I spent a lot of time in South city, a lot of time in South County and Afton, um, some time out in West County. Like my dad lives out in West County now in like a nicer neighborhood. So like, and I went to DeSmet, but like my whole life, I, I lived in like the South County area. I went to Seven Holy Founders and Afton. Um, and then when I got to high school, I went to DeSmet and I started meeting all these kids from Chesterfield and West County and people who had like, you know, just different backgrounds, mm-hmm. like all over the city, like 
these kids are much different than the kids that I played football with at Melville growing up. And like, I just really appreciate that about the city because like there's all these different pockets and neighborhoods, like mm-hmm. as you guys know that we all know and love, right? And it's like, you can meet someone from, you know, let's say Dogtown or someone from the Hill and like they have a little bit of that in them, like which I love. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's not about the money or like the socioeconomic background, but it's like, oh, I can tell you're from the Hill because you're very family oriented or like mm-hmm. you have great taste in food or whatever, right? And it's like, right. not not to rag on West County, but like when my parents <laughs> kind of moved out to West County, like. I was like, where's all the restaurants? Yeah. Like, where's all the mom and pop? Like, that you can go and catch a vibe and totally. catch, like, yeah, lunch at you the know, same like, time. it's a beautiful area. West County is beautiful, but I miss, like, the little, you know, sandwich places and the little right. corner spots. But, um, yeah, in terms of my childhood, I mean, it was amazing. Like I said, I have so many friends that still live here and, and friends that I've known since I was like five or six years old, and, and we're still best friends to this day. So mm-hmm. I credit that to, like, St. Louis and, and the attitude of people here. That's like, yeah very loyal very very like i got your back no matter what um mm-hmm. and I, I love that i i don't think you can find that in every city we say that all the time and like just in terms of even what we do with highlighting businesses and like the support and comments that come from that of people mm-hmm. being like oh i love that place like it's so true that there's mm-hmm. like such a loyalty to yeah. like um what do we local businesses and right. you know people mom and pop shops right so, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and when people ask for help they get it. And that's like a thing in another city. It's like re- really competitive. And, and we were just talking about food. So we've had a lot of chefs on the show and like chefs actually help each other. Like, oh, you you ran out of ingredients. Like, call me. I got yeah. you. Where yeah. like in a Chicago, right. they're like, bro, it's cutthroat. Like right. one yeah. bad month and like we're done, you know? Yeah. So it's uh, it's just different. I think it's a little bit slower but also it can you can you can have a fast experience in St. Louis, but you can also have a very slow experience. Um, right. If that makes sense, like you can have a slow pace of life and still be successful in St. Louis. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Um, so, what year did you graduate high school? Twenty sixteen. Okay, so you're just two years younger than us. And so, when you graduated, what was like your plan of action, like your path? <laughs> was it? A... Did you always want to be an artist, or? Uh, I can cuss on this, right? Hell yes. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Um, <laughs> no, like, uh, it's so funny. Um, I'm just now, so I just turned 25 in mm-hmm. June, and, like, it's just now kind of hitting me that, like, I'm an adult, you know? Yeah. Like, I hate <laughs> we, to say that. No, I, we feel, we're, like, we're about to have a kid. Right. Well, congrats, I'm, like, first I'm, like, 13. Yeah. What do you mean? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, but it hits you quick, bro. Just wait two You're more like, years. like, wait, we're yeah. about to have a house? Like, you just, I don't know. It's when like, do you what, actually feel like an adult? Right. It's, like, where did it all go? Like, um, I saw this, like, Joe Rogan quote, and he was, like, he was like, one day you're at the grocery store and someone calls you sir or ma'am or whatever. And you're like, what? Like, I'm a sir now? Like, I'm not a kid? And it's just like happens like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, weird way of answering that question. But, like, I never really had a plan. Like, I was always very, very creative as a kid. Like, always entering, you know, the drawing contests or whatever at school. Always coloring. I used to win, like, the design competitions for, like, if we had a big basketball tournament, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd get to design the cover and stuff, which I thought was, like, so cool at the time. Hell yeah. Um. One thing that I think is really interesting that I'll touch on is like when I went to DeSmet, um, I was doing all of this. So like I credit DeSmet for like a lot of the man I am today, especially because like they gave us laptops. Freshman year, this is 2012, they gave us laptops and they're like, I mean, you have to pay for them, but they're like, these are yours. Like you own these. So, you know, we had a desktop growing up, but like mm-hmm. everybody shares one computer. It's not really yours. You can't take it in your room and like mm-hmm. have it to yourself. So all of a sudden, you know, I'm whatever, 13, 14 years old, and I have this laptop, and, like, I was like, dude, the world is at my fingertips. Like, I can do anything. So I, when I was a freshman at the cement, I taught myself graphic design, um, just started learning everything. Like, in the middle of class, like, I'd just be watching graphic design videos, learning how to do it, teaching myself, like, started my own business, like, was always kind of doing my own thing throughout high school. But the reason I bring that up is, like, I was very, very insecure. And like at that age, you know, that's like a very pivotal age for people. You just want to fit in really. Of course. And like, I look back, first of all, I think everything happens for a reason. Everybody Mm -hmm. has their own path. Like you can't change your past. So just move forward. Mm -hmm. But, um, I look back and like, I just wanted to fit in, like, especially at an all boys school, like you just kind of want to be one of the guys and sit at the table and fit in, which, which is unfortunate, but that's the attitude that I had. And like, so I didn't tell anyone. So no one knew that like, I was having my own business. I was like working with like, I was designing football uniforms for like some small colleges and like high schools and stuff, like all just in my bedroom Mm -hmm. on my own. My brother didn't know, my mom, dad didn't know. So like when I turned 18 and it was time to go to school, like no one knew that. Mm -hmm. So like I could look back and blame my parents and be like, oh, you guys didn't push me into the arts or you didn't push me into anything. But it was like, at the end of the day, like 
I wasn't putting it out there mm -hmm. that the way I could have been. And I think times are different now. Like now, 2023, it's a long time later. It's more accepted to kind of be creative and, and not mm -hmm. that it wasn't, but like, I think back then it was just like, if you were creative, you were kind of like looked at differently. And, and that's not what I wanted, you know, yeah, which like is a quiet, weird kid doodling or right, something. Right. Like, I, yeah, like not people, the sports kid or whatever. Exactly. Like, um, yeah, like at, at the lunch table, people just want to talk about parties and like girls and sports right. and like. I'm like, oh, there's like other stuff I want to talk about. You're like I just designed yeah. this like album cover. I really want to show right. my boys and see what they think. You right. Know, and and, and like looking that. back, like I I would encourage anybody to like never feel that way because like I still hang out with all those kids. They're still my good friends, yeah. but they would have loved me no matter what. Like mm -hmm. they would have still hung out with me and all that anyway. So mm -hmm. yeah, by the time I graduated, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was like, oh, I'll just go to Mizzou. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Mizzou, studied business, got a business degree because yeah. I was like, well, I can use that with pretty much anything. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's pretty, seems safe enough. So yeah, that's kind of my background there. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So did you still do a lot of graphic design and art? Like yeah, yeah. I, I never stopped. Like once yeah. when I first started, when I first learned it, it was like an addiction. Like I was, I've done it every day mm -hmm. since then, almost mm -hmm. to the point where um, this past year in February, I was on a work trip and someone spilled water all over my laptop, and I didn't have it backed up. Luckily, it's fine. Like this is it. Luckily, it's fine. But I, I was like physically ill. Like I, I. This is kind of bad to say, but I felt like someone that I knew had like passed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when I thought that. 10 years of my like life life's work. was gone. Like yeah. I yeah. physically thought someone like close to me had like passed sure. away. And that's but, all you could think about as you were like trying to get it fixed. I don't like, yeah, you. it's wow. all I could think about. <clears throat> oh, I've been there before. It is your something life's like work. that. Like yeah. something like that happens where like something gets stolen or something like like a memory card failed and like all that footage I got. Like you just think about it all the it's time. It's like, yeah. well, we go through such great lengths to make something or capture something or whatever it is. And it's like, I don't know, because it, it kind of made me grateful, though, too, at the same time. Like, you know, yeah. it's like tragedy. Well, now you have like backed that. up, I hope. I don't. <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't, no. But, Come on, no. Well, I have iCloud, so I think it is. But, yeah. But um, I don't ah, know. Yeah. So let me ask you this then. So uh, we have a lot of different people on the show. And one of the things I, I want to ask you as a creative and as an artist is, what is like a myth that somebody would think about you that is like, I mean, that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, what well, is a myth about you kind of touched on some yeah. of it. So that's, like, on the right track of, like, right. even just – and I think, like, with what you're saying, going to DeSmet and all-boys school, one. Right. Um, oh, my God. I totally just lost my train of thought of, like, <laughs> the you? creative aspect of – oh, there's just, like, a lack of maturity and appreciation for what you were doing at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is probably why you weren't as inclined to share. But, like, on that path of just, mm -hmm. like, there is, like, this – reputation or um idea yeah, of like kinda. yeah of like what an artist is yeah okay so you want to talk about that i think um that's a tough question i think what's cool about like modern day today is and, and being an artist is like there's no i mean there's never been a right or wrong answer but it's like with the advances of technology and like um you know with the digital stuff and like video and music like i think what's cool is I, i'm huge into music that's like my number one love is music i think what's cool is like Look at all these artists nowadays who are big and popular and some of the biggest artists in the world who started on SoundCloud all because the technology was there for them to record a song in their bedroom, not even mix it, like don't even master it, just like make it just like this mm -hmm. and put it out there and maybe market it a little bit. And now you're doing world tours because of that. Whereas like mm -hmm. flash forward 10, you know, even 10 years ago, that was not a reality. Like social media was kind of at its beginning stages, like whatever, maybe, maybe more like 20 years ago. But mm -hmm. I just think it's cool that like really anything is possible. It's a lot easier said than done. Like I think mm -hmm. a lot of artists would tell you that is like getting your work in front of the right people to me is is the hardest thing to do. Mm -hmm. Cause like, especially for someone like me, um, you see all these people over social media and Instagram who are popping and like have all these followers and whatnot. And it's like, I'm, I'm not gonna like degrade or trash anyone's art, but it's like some things feed the algorithm and like certain things work and like, I call it, you know, kind of like here today, gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, a lot of people can make art that'll pop off on social media and will do well for a little bit. But like, is that going to work long term? Mm -hmm. Like, is that going to stick around forever? It's everlasting. Yeah, yeah. Like, does it have meaning? Like, does it actually have value? And like, not saying my work has more value than others, but it's like, that's the one thing I always try to emphasize is like, don't do things just because it's hot today or like it's trending today mm -hmm. because like you'll never be able to 
I don't know. It's just weird. Like, I think a lot of, you reading. can't keep yeah. replicating it and you compared it to music. It's the same thing of like trends on right. music. It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this dance and I'm going to pop off. And then now I got to come up with a new dance and then I got to come up with a new song right. to pop off again. And you don't have lasting power. And I think like J. Cole had a song about it, like bashing younger rappers because he's like, you don't have yeah, staying yeah. power. Like, you're going to be on Love and Hip Hop in a few years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know? so, yeah I know the lyrics. Um, I love that song. <laughs> but he's not wrong, though. And you're not wrong about what you're doing. And, and I think, like you said, it has to have meaning it's it's bigger than just you know just paint you know it's right. bigger than just you know so let's segue to your creative process mm-hmm. then so that we can get into it so that's like something that i like i see your videos on instagram and you're you're you know have this messy i would say desk which like yeah, that yeah. might ruin my creativity because i need like a clean desk but like you have this like desk with like doodles everywhere you have your computer up you have two computers like yeah, you're, yeah. you're doing design so like what does your creative process look like and like how do you draw inspiration during that process and do you block out time for it or do you just do it so this is so funny i just had this conversation i think with you and and someone else close to me recently and like i need to start taking it more seriously and and treat it more like um you know blocking out time for it or whatever but up until this point it's just very very much like an emotional thing very much like if it has to come out of me like it'll come out of me mm-hmm. that's why you see my desk like what he's talking about is like i just have doodles and random drawings all over my desk like i'm just like oh that'd be cool like doodle oh like i it's a lot of it's writing actually mm-hmm. like i love writing and i love saying things so like um my process man is like there really is no process <laughs> which is why it's so hard it's so hard for me to be consistent because like i have notebooks and fi- like file cabinets full of ideas of sketches of doodles things that i'll dream about like i'll have a dream and be like oh this would be so cool sketch it doodle it put it away and like it's not that i don't want to do it it's just that my brain is like yeah, but we could think of other stuff and like Mm -hmm. instead of like taking the hours or days or weeks to do a project, which is like, I guess that that could have been a better answer for like your last one. But like, I think there's a lot of dedication in terms of um, there's a lot of good ideas in the world. And like a person like myself, like I love coming up with ideas and coming up with new things and, and, and all this. But it's like, you can't really do anything unless you turn those ideas into reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whether that's business or that's baking, or it's like being an athlete, it's like you might be the most athletic kid in the gym, but if you're not like putting the work in and like mm-hmm. doing the drills and like doing the fundamentals, like a, no, like other kids are going to beat you all day long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing I really struggle with is like I know I have great ideas and I know that I have great themes and, and great things, but I've really been struggling like to really hammer them out. Mm-hmm. Like it takes something like that mural for me to like really do it because I'm like, oh, Luke's counting on me and like mm-hmm. this will be seen by all these people, et cetera. And it's like I'm struggling to kind of like just do it for myself sometimes, you know? Yeah, it's the idea part, and then it's the plan, and then the execution part. And it's right. a three-part process. Like like you're saying, like, you want to be creative and have those ideas, but what we talked about recently was, like, treating it as a business. Right. Even if it's a personal project, like, it's still a business, right. you know? So, yeah, like, yeah. the mural, it's like, okay, I have a client, it, or at work, you know, you're designing this. It's There's a due date. If I do this much each day, I'll get it done by then, you right. know? So. I, I think it I think it is hard to be creative and I, I read a quote the other day too is like creative people need time to just sit and do yeah, nothing yeah um, but I also think creative people need time to practice every other person practices you know like Marissa practices every day teaching you get better every single day hopefully everybody gets better every oh, day perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but same in business like I would talk to somebody about it it's it's literally a sport LeBron James is not better because he's more athletic he's better because he trains harder than everybody right. and that's why he's still healthy him and Tom Brady. Tom Brady is a better example. Yeah. It's like he's not better, more athletic than any other quarterback. And you have to be reflective of your process. Like that's yeah. something I teach my kids in anything. I'm like, we're going to do this over and over and over for six weeks. And you're going to be like, oh, my God. But I'm like the practice of it. And then like at the end, you need to reflect and like look at where you started to where you right. are now. Like right. that and anything you do is the most important thing is that yeah. reflection aspect. And I think it's like putting it out there. Like you said something about like receiving or asking like – you look back in high school and you're like, okay, what if I like asked for help during this time? Like, right. where would I be at now? And I think sure. what you're doing now and what I've noticed like watching from afar is like you're asking for things and you're trying to advocate and get things. And that's yeah. the only way to really do it when you're working yeah, for yeah. yourself. Yeah, there's the quote from, um, I don't know where it's from originally. I found it in the Kanye West documentary, but <laughs> it says a closed mouth does not get fed, you mm-hmm. know, which is like so factual. And um, I try to do it. I'm not always the best at it, but it's like true. You know, it's like, if you don't ask for something, no one's just going to walk by you and hand you something, sure. you know, it's like, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter what you're doing um, and do it the right way. Like I've had success doing it, but I was also like prepared, you know, like 
I knew what I wanted to say. I knew what I want to talk about. But that's a reminder. Like, I need to do better about that. I need to reach out to more people. So you went from doing graphic design, and now you just painted this badass mural uh-huh. in the office. <laughs> so, like, what's your favorite type of art to curate? To curate and create. create. Yeah, yeah. Both. Yeah, yeah. So what's funny is, like I said, I've been doing graphic design for so long now. And, like, I do it for my full-time job, like my day job. Mm-hmm. So it's like sometimes you just don't want to, you know, it's like you don't want to go home and teach. Like it's like, you know, so it's like I still love graphic design because I'm like I'm good at it and like the possibilities are like endless. But the reason I picked up painting was like it was during COVID actually. It was only like, you know, three years ago or so. And I was just like, God, I feel so like frustrated and there's so many things that I want to say and do. And like the digital, the whole digital thing only gets you so far. And I was like, I wonder if I could just like paint something. So I just like tried to start painting and um, it just felt so good to like make something physical. And I think especially now with the rise of like AI and the rise of like anybody uh-huh. can generate anything in a second. Like I think painting, I, I talked about this with a, this artist that I know and he was actually telling me, he's like, dude, painting is only gonna become more and more and more valuable because it's going to be that physical, tangible product that like people are looking for. Mm-hmm. And like no one's gonna care about like this digital, like. Mm-hmm whatever you can't predict the future but it's yeah. like if you can make a million images in the snap of a thumb right so i that's why i've leaned more into like the whole painting and like having a mural because and like currently i'm working on two murals for um some grade schools in the area mm-hmm. which like i'm really really excited about good for you yeah I, I, if there's any grade schools out there that want murals by the way like i'm trying to I'm, anybody that needs a mural though too well anybody you <laughs> might have to pay but I, I, i'm donating them to grade schools though oh I'm, okay Dope. i'm doing the, yeah for these two grade schools for free um, just cause like, I remember like growing up, like I still remember what the murals look like in my grade school. Like mm-hmm. I still remember what they said and what they looked like. And like, I just think it's funny because our kids, I mean, kids are so impressionable and like, it's so hard to like, well, when you're a kid, like you kind of soak in everything and you don't really notice it. Mm-hmm. But if you walk past something every single day on the way to lunch, like every day and you're looking at this mural, you might not even think about it. But like, if you remember that five or 10 years later and, and it has a positive message, like, these two that I'm doing are really uplifting and and supposed to be really positive about like children and and all that. It's like, that's my goal. Like, I don't care if I have to spend my own money on it. I don't make any money on it. It's like, I would do that every single day of the week if I could like put murals in grade schools for kids to like, again, even if they don't consciously think about it, they're walking past it every single day. And it's just like, I want to be a positive influence in terms of like they get on their phones Mm -hmm. and all you see is negative stuff all day long. I, I have a sister who's 13 who like, I do not envy being a kid right now at all. Like I'm, I'm kind of glad I, I barely missed like the end of like. We grew up at the perfect time, right? Because we, like I think when we were freshmen, that's when like iPhone, yeah, four G came out, Twitter. and yeah. like yeah. it was like this big, and that, and we missed that boat of like, like yeah. we got. She's to, in it every day. I mean, she gets to see like, right, the I'm kids sure, that are yeah. thirteen, that are fourteen. Well, that's what like the whole thing was like when I came in here. It's like God forbid I ask <laughs> yeah. you to put your phone away. Like you have to detach from your phone. It's gonna be okay. You will survive. So yeah. I, anyway, not to throw you off track, but <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's tough. Um, I mean, I remember like literally calling my friends on their landline phone and their mom would pick up. I'd be like, oh, is Joe home? Like, I'll be over in 10 minutes, ride sure. your bike. Like, I love that. I, this is actually so random, but I heard a, I was reading something one time about how, how um, like modern movie directors, you never notice like there's not a lot of movies set in like modern day. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of them are either in the future or in the past. Mm-hmm. And one thing I was reading, people were making great points. They were like, cause cell phones ruined all of the story arc. Yeah. Because it's not like, oh, in the eighties when like you couldn't get a hold of someone all of a sudden this whole story unfolds because, oh, I can't find him. We got to go all around town looking for him. Mm-hmm. It's like almost every story that you could tell could be <clears throat> solved by like a cell phone being in your pocket, sure. by calling someone or knowing their yeah. location. Or I just thought that was so crazy the way that it has like affected our world. Like mm-hmm. I know that was like such a real. No, and then kid. the new shows and movies, it's like <clears throat> they're the all tech show the tech up on show the up on the screen. Right. They're like do, 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 right. hey, bro. Like, you know, and like, and then it's like, okay, like this is like too weird. Or like you see what your camera sees. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you know what I mean? Like yeah. the creepy, like creeping on oh, yeah, type. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Black Mirror type Yeah, stuff, yeah. yes, exactly. But <sighs> that's brutal. Yeah, just like the, just freedom of like when we grew up was just so much better so i think that's cool like just something for the kids like to be yeah. impacted by long term yeah, yeah so i have a question for you if you could work in any you just mentioned like doing murals in schools but like yeah if you could work in any style of art or any like facet of that career like every single day like you could only do yeah, that yeah. specific job what would it be and why 
That's hard. I mean, I, <laughs> that's so hard. I love clothing. Like, I, I think clothing would be cool because it's the possibilities are like so mm -hmm. endless between like what you can do. Yeah. I mean, I would love to say like murals, just like if I could travel the world and do murals in like children's hospitals or like schools or like even like outdoor like cities would be amazing. Mm -hmm. So I would say probably like I'd be like a full time muralist or um, like clothing would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Like Kid Super. Yeah, Kid Super. <laughs> Definitely. That's my favorite brand. I spend too much money on Kid Super. Yeah, Never it is not cheap. It. Yeah. He had that commercial. I'm uh, like he's so out blown of touch. up. He's, he's blown yeah, up. Yeah, he, he. That's a crazy example of like um, getting in touch with people <laughs> during COVID, mm -hmm. 2020. He was like not that big. I mean, he was big, but like nowhere near where he is now. And I remember one day he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna be doing like a live Zoom conference. Like, just hop on here tonight at like seven o'clock." And I got on there, and it was me and like ten other people. And I'm with this guy like in a yeah. Zoom conference, and yeah. like I didn't even really say anything. I just sat there and listened. Mm -hmm. And now he's like the interim creative director for like Louis Vuitton. Mm. Yeah. So like, and if he did that today, there'd be thousands. Of there people would be on. tens of thousands of people on that call. But yeah. three years ago, there was ten people on there, and it's like, I don't know what the moral of that story is. It's just like crazy how like you can get in contact with these people and like, sure. well, life can change quick. And I think with yeah. social media, and I think with artists, is something that I <clears throat> that I see, and it could be different. Is like artists are so reserved on putting stuff out to the yeah. world. And I get it because it is your art, but me coming from like a like an outside world of it, like dealing with photographers, dealing with videographers, I was like, perfect is not perfect. Just put it out there right. and see what happens. And then tomorrow they're going to forget about it anyways. And then yeah. put something else out there, you know, and just see what sticks. And and I get it because it's like, it is your brand. It's your business. And I think that's probably why you have the the double Instas. You're like, let me throw yeah. stuff out on this one. Let me <laughs> throw stuff out on, on the Finsta page. One's a guinea, <laughs> one's a guinea pig. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy because I think like if you set, if you took away all the, you know, statistics or whatever and you sat two people down and looked at my two instagram pages people would probably prefer the finsta like people would be like oh i'd rather look at this because it's more personal. raw personal like organic yeah but yeah i think to your point it's like for me personally like if i spend so long this is what i really hate about social media if i spend so long on a painting like let's say i spend a couple days on a painting and you post it up you know gets a couple hundred likes whatever and then it's gone like you said people forget mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. It's like, damn, like, why am I even going Doing through the this. trouble? Like, what, yeah. you know, so it's and like. And you're thinking real hard about what you're going to say and what caption you're, right. what pictures you're going to pick. And you're right. like, dude, I just yeah. busted my ass working on this thing. And now I'm like wondering when you time I should post. You get a 24-hour appreciation and yeah. then right. it's gone. Right, right. So that's why I'm like hesitant to post all this stuff out there because it's like, I would really rather it be something that I want to live out there forever. Mm -hmm. Like, again, even if it's only, up, it might seem like it's only up for 24 hours. Like, mm -hmm. if people find me through this or whatever and they go to my page and it's like only my best, only what I'm the most proud of, you know? Yeah. Right. Which might not be that, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me that might be the wrong way to look at things. <laughs> no, but no, you could be right. That's the way my brain works. No, you could be right. Yeah. So, like, looking, just speaking of social media and like being in the artist world, I'm mm -hmm. sure you follow like other peeps in the, in yeah. the area so like who like do you feel like really inspires you like other artists to like shout out or like would you be interested in like collabing with or something yeah that's a great question I mean in St. Louis first of all like Brock Steele's like obviously I know he has like a lot of clout here but he was like when I talk about like reaching out to people like when I first started kind of painting two or three years ago I literally sent him a DM whatever mm -hmm. I was like yo like what's up, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, literally right away, he was like, come through my studio. And now we're like pretty cool because of it. So it's like, I love the fact that I can do that with like Brock or different guys in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, people who like have it going, like a little more figured out and then they can kind of help you get going. Like mm -hmm. I would love to do that for people someday, you know, like I love that. But um, in general, like artists, I really love this guy named Priest Corp, who, um, which is super funny because like, I've talked about him before mm -hmm. and then again I just shot him an email and was like he's in London so like when I was traveling to London I hit him up and was like yo I'm gonna be in London I he's anonymous so like I had no idea what he looked like he could have been anything and like he could have been multiple people sure and like I just hit him up blah, blah blah I'll do all this for you like I would love to help you blah blah, blah. uh he responded right away and was like I would love for you to come to the studio come meet us work with the team all this so I went there a couple days and like met him whatever and like I mean, I could list a lot of artists who inspire me in terms of like, there's great artists and I love their work or whatever, but that inspires me. Mm -hmm. Like someone who has like that pull, like this guy, Priest Corp, he, he showed me a lot. Like when I went in his studio, he showed me so much and was so open and told me all the ins and outs of like, hey, here's why I do this. Here's why we do this. And like one big thing, I thought my paintings had to be perfect. 
Like I thought, oh, every line has to be straight. Everything has to be perfect. That was one thing he told me. He was like, dude, no. He's mm -hmm. like, he's like, the reason why people pay for paintings is because they want to see that it's done by human hand. They want to see the imperfections. They want to see like where the colors don't exactly match, et cetera. So like mm -hmm. that inspires me, like, like getting that insight into someone who's a professional full-time artist yeah. and is able to be like, dude, I, he's doing shows in Milan and Los Angeles and New York. And I'm just like, little old me you know and i'm like mm -hmm. wow you really took me in with open arms like that so that's really inspiring to me that's cool so i want to talk about something like balancing your creative but also balancing your real life so yeah. a lot of artists probably i would assume face that where we just want to be creative all day um and even i feel like that like business bogs me down like oh, okay i gotta send an invoice and i gotta do this yeah. or i gotta do this project that's due tomorrow but i really want to like go shoot photos of like the weather because it's foggy out and that would be more fun for me yeah um which i never get to do but i would love <laughs> to go do, shoot some actual cool photos that aren't like bit like a client right you know so yeah. um tell us how you balance that and like what the challenges you face and okay, I have a project at work, but I also have a project that I'm working on that I want to also bring to life as well. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have the answer. Like I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out mm -hmm. all the time. One big thing I think is everything in life comes down to priorities. So like a big thing for me, like I, I realized that I was spending a lot of my weekends going out and partying and drinking and, and just, you know, being young and having fun, which I think everybody, you should, you should, mm -hmm. if that's what you want, Go do that. I, I've learned, like I always say about Mizzou, I learned 10 times more at Mizzou than I like ever did in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Like nothing in the classroom I really ever took away from Mizzou. It was like the parties and the meeting people and the network, you know, like that sort of thing. So like, but for me this past year, at the beginning of the year, I realized like if I'm serious, okay, I have my full-time job that pays my bills and, and I get, you know, everything you need to survive. I was like, if I'm serious about wanting to take off with something else, like, what am I going to prioritize here? So I quit drinking like four or five months ago, um, which again, I'm not saying like drinking is a bad thing or, or whatever, do whatever you want to do. But for me personally, I realized I was dedicating a lot of my time to going out and like, you know, whether it's watching football all day long on a Sunday or watching college football all day long on a Saturday, <laughs> like a lot while of you my, were drinking at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like yeah. I, I still hang out with my friends. I just don't drink because like I noticed for me personally, it was like, I just wanted to drink all the whole time so it's like it's hard to stop and then it does like fuck up your entire next day it right it like just I, motivates you from I, doing anything that was the biggest thing for me it was not the fun i love the fun it was the anxiety totally. for like three days the after anxiety the and worry i'm you trying to the anxiety like yeah anxiety yeah, yeah have you ever heard that does. no, <laughs> yeah. no you remember i'm like oh we I, always get that we'll, like go depressing. we'll even go just like to di like eat and i'm like I can't, I'm having such an anxiety attack, like right, from yeah. drinking the night right. before. Anxiety, it's just stupid. I like so I, I think like, the episode name? <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> I think it's the, the, the moral is like, don't quit drinking or whatever, but it's like, look at your life and look where you're spending your time yeah. mm -hmm. and like find what you can prioritize over other things. So for me, that was a big thing. Like now on my weekends, I have all this free time on the weekend to like mm -hmm. do whatever I want. And like, that doesn't mean I'm working all the time, mm -hmm. but it just opened up a lot of time for me. Yeah, and it's like the five to nine. It's like you work from the nine to five and then like from the five to nine, it's like how much progress can I make on this side thing until it's my main thing? Right. And it's it's a lot less than you think because everybody's like, okay, if I just had a couple extra hours a day, I can make it happen. And that's like the, the hardest thing is like the job and the business yeah. and the job and the dream and the passion. So no, it's, uh, it's, it is tough, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like that's kind of when we made the shift is like when we started saying no more to going out and really like focusing on what we want now to it's to like grow personally, right. it's rare if we go out past nine 30 now. Yeah, sure. you're like definitely not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, especially with the baby on the way, like it's going to be eight 30 now. It's going to be putting sun that, we were like, <laughs> yeah. No thanks. Um, um so Tell us about like the f support system that you have of like just kind of where you want to be and like sharing that with your family and, and how that looks for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tricky one. Cause like my parents are very traditional in a sense of like my mom's a teacher, you know, and like my dad's a doctor. So it's like, I always joke that they were like playing like dress up, house. you know, like, yeah, like house. they were playing house, like what traditional roles. So it's like, I don't know. I, I, I love my parents and like I think they would be happy if I did anything. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, I, I've come to, to come to realize that like all parents just want their kids to be safe and like have a house and like have food in your belly. Like that's it. They don't care about anything other than that. Like 
So I think it's kind of hard because for my parents, like they see that like I have a good job and like it pays the bills and all that, whatever. And I think they're, they'd rather me just kind of relax and just like take it easy and, and you know, settle. Enjoy your life. Yeah, settle. Yeah, yeah it's like, I mean, everyone should enjoy their life. <laughs> no, but like enjoy, like just don't like try no, to do everything all right, at once. Right, right. Yeah. Which, which I'm saying like, it, I honestly, sometimes I find myself like needing to do that more. Like mm -hmm. relax, just take a breather. I think, again, talk about social media has like made everyone think that like, God, if I don't do this before I'm 30 or or whatever, like, well, I'll be a loser or whatever. And I fight that all the time. I'm like, damn, I'm getting older. Like, mm -hmm. how much longer can I kind of do this art thing without like kind of looking, you know, like a quote unquote loser or whatever, mm -hmm. which is like, <laughs> it's just so stupid because we all have these perceptions of ourselves and others. And it's like, at the end of the totally. day, it's like, however you want to spend your time on this earth, like, just do whatever you want. Don't worry about what other people think. And I think that's a big reason why I got into art was like, I was a very shy, very like insecure kid, you know, like mm -hmm. I kind of talked about in high school. And then I was like, dude, I'm getting old and like I'm not putting myself out there. Mm -hmm. Like people don't even know who I am. You know, they, they know who I am when I go to school and I'm wearing my uniform and like because of sports I play. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you don't know like when I write a poem and like now I'll write a poem, post on my Instagram and people are like, damn, like I didn't know you were thinking like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um. Yeah, I kind of forgot the question. No, Sorry. that was just I your support. Do. No, you're good. You're oh, like, yeah, the support system. Yeah, and just yeah. like I get like as parents, they just want us to like thrive and like yeah. like be comfortable and set yourself up for, you know, success. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I definitely have a support system. I guess what I was trying to say is like my parents are just very traditional yeah. and they, they never would have like ever gotten into something like this themselves mm -hmm. so it's hard for them to be like super vocal and supportive because like they're like dude you're doing fine you know like mm -hmm. when i'm hard on myself or, or i'm busting my butt trying to like do something they were like they're like dude you're fine like yeah, slow down which is fine like that's all good but it's like um yeah i don't know it's hard because i think everybody has advice like every doesn't matter who you are whether it's your friends family strangers everybody's going to tell you something else and i'm really kind of struggling right now trying to just like do what's best for me mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people struggle with that, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's. It I think that's good. And at that age, I feel like like that age again. You're yeah, two yeah. years younger, <laughs> but I do feel like for even us, like two years ago, we were like, we just had this moment of like, you, we gotta live with like ourselves. Like right. we got whatever we do, what we think of ourselves or each each other is the most important thing. And right. like it does take. Like I feel like this past year, like. I don't know, not to get like super personal, but I'm just like more vocal of like yeah. how I feel about stuff. And I'm like, I'm not wasting my time on people who aren't like giving me the same energy or support back that I deserve. And I'm just like, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm just yeah. doing me. And like, I just, I'm at peace. Like right. you're, you just find peace, like living that way. We're at an earlier time. You would think like, oh, they said this. And you like, like replay you, it in your you, head yeah. and you like internalize like every interaction yeah. with someone or something. And it's just like, honestly. But I agree with the social media thing of like seeing it and like, we're going through it now. Like we're having a baby and buying a house or whatever it might be. But like two years ago, we felt the same way of like, we were jealous or not jealous, but yeah, you yeah. would look at other people. Envious. So we learned that from Nikki Glaser, the difference. And jobs. the funny <laughs> thing with me is like, I started a business very young and made like you know started making good money and then like my friends were in, still in college or whatever right. and now they made money so you're always like comparing like oh your buddy gets a job like now i'm just so happy for everyone like yeah i want oh, so right. much success for people and i think that if you're not happy for other people's success you're not going to get it yourself yeah because you're closing yourself off to the world so like one of the things is like train your mind is like anytime you start to feel envy start to feel that, like see why and mm -hmm. then channel that into being like oh my god bro like i'm so happy for you, you got that job but also and, yeah. be proud of where you are in this moment because where you are is better than where you were two years right, ago right and so yeah. like look at look at the accomplishments there you know yeah that's so true there's growth like what you're doing now whatever it is that you're like oh i could be doing more like two-year-old three-year-old you is like yeah that, that is rooting for you yeah, that's definitely something I need to do a better job of. But yeah, like I look at that mural, I'm like, damn, like I did that. I like, did that. like I, I was with my friend at the hotel and we walked past it and they were like, damn, like you did that. And I was like, <laughs> it's hard when you like actually physically, you know, it's like when you physically do something, you don't really, you almost like detach from it, you know, mm -hmm. and it just becomes a job. But yeah, it, it is something I need to be more proud of. Like yeah. it is, it is, I mean, I'm proud of it. Don't get me wrong. Yes, of course. But, but it's um, incredible. I mean, the, the fact of like the amount of people that look at it, but like you said, you're not there every day. I see it every day. Yeah. So now it's just there. 
It's just right. in the back of my, it's in the corner of my Zoom call. Right. People are like, I, hey, what is that? And then I'll like pull the camera I over. love seeing, like, yeah. you guys will post, you know, you shout out a little coffee place or, yeah. or whatever. I love yeah. seeing it. Oh, I back. always put it in the back. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, breakfast. You know, I, boom. I love it, dude. And then, like, we did, like, anytime somebody comes in, like, I think for Festival of Nations, we did a couple photo shoots yeah. of strings in front of it. Like, I was just like, hey, you want to stand in front of the mural? Boom, let's take a photo. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. But at the end of the day, like, there was a mural in there before i think and then they painted over it white so yeah, like that's the thing crazy. is it is it is a physical it is physical but hey when we move out because we i hope you, they don't paint over that i hope they don't either but I you thought never about know that. You i know, know i thought about that i'm like when whoever they move out takes of, it just like you have to the only like, deal is you well, have to keep this mural i'll be like look at the end of the day do whatever you want but why would you want it like why sure. would you want to paint over that what are you going to put up there they're just going to paint a white like the person had a mural there before it was like a, a retail store okay. and then like an art gallery moved in and okay. painted over oh, well, it and hung up sense. art yeah but yeah, like at the end of the day, and it's like, but I think there's going to be more art in St. Louis, and I think one of the one of the cool things, I mean, there's nothing cooler than, I think uh, they did one at the last exit in St. Louis. It's like you're driving into Illinois, and they have these different things with art, but it's like you look at Grand Center, and like you drive down the walls off Washington, it's like mm-hmm. that building did not look that good, you know, before that, and now some of the best artists in the world came in to draw on those and to paint on those, so. Yeah, Kenny Sharp. Yep, that's who did the one with the faces, yeah. all three faces. He's like. Yeah. Incredible. He's really, really big time. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Um, so we always, we asked like the piece of advice, but was there like a something that somebody told you that like made you make the jump into putting out your first art? Like, was there like a like a pivotal moment, or was it just you were just gonna do it and start start? Yeah, there there definitely was like a very pivotal moment. It, it's kind of like. A little deep, but I'll talk about it. But it was 2020 during COVID when I think everybody was kind of like forced into their room or whatever you want to call it and like forced to look in the mirror kind of. And I think, so what happened for me was I was a senior at Mizzou. It was supposed to be the best, you know, semester of my life. I'm supposed to be down there partying, having fun. I'm about to graduate college. I worked so hard for that. COVID hits. So I go from like, in a week period, I go from like being down at Mizzou, living my life, you know, king of campus, whatever, to like, I'm in my parents' bedroom because of COVID. I can't leave, whatever. Um, then me and my girlfriend at the time had broken up. So that was like tremendously hard. And then my grandmother had also passed away. And then also like icing on the cake, uh, one of my best friends like attempted suicide, mm-hmm. um, which I, I don't know if I should talk about all that, but that, that was to me the biggest moment. Like I felt like I was literally stuck in a tornado and my head was spinning and all these things were happening. And like, I was just forced to look at myself and be like, dude, like all of these things are either being taken from you or like, yeah, everything was being taken from me. And I was like, I'm not even like putting myself out there. I was like, I'm just like living day by day, just like doing whatever I think society thinks I should do. And I was like, that was like a huge punch in the face. And I was like, wow, like, I have so much to offer this world and like so much to give. And again, it doesn't matter whether you're an artist or a singer or a baker or a teacher, whatever you are, it's like you have gifts and abilities that like it's a it's a shame to not share them with the world. And I think that was my biggest thing was like I was kind of ashamed that I was not like sharing my talents and abilities with the world. And then when all that happened, I was like, screw it. I don't care what anybody thinks. Like I'm just going to start posting whatever I want. Like I don't care who sees it or anything. Mm-hmm. So that was like mm-hmm. – a big moment and um yeah that's why I, I do almost everything i do is like for my grandmother because nice. like she was like the one person growing up who who really pushed me towards art and being creative so everything i do all the way from like like my name to like everything is is all like for her and that's why i try to um you know with that mural like i try to do things that i think like would this like fit into what she believed in or like, not even that, but it's like, is it timeless? Like, would it mm-hmm. someone that an eight-year-old lady could look at the same way that like a five-year-old kid mm-hmm. could look at? Mm-hmm. That's what that's I what I try that. to. Yeah, I try to hit that with like all my art. Is like, I want everybody on the spectrum, from kids to like the oldest of people, to like look at it and just feel. I don't know. Mm-hmm. She's probably so proud of you. I miss my grandma Mary. <laughs> love you, grandma. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask one more question and then we can wrap up. Yeah. But I, you brought up your name, and that was actually what I yeah. was gonna ask is to tell us a look because Luke had told me, but for mm-hmm. listeners' sake, like. What's the story behind you? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I ever introduced myself. But oh, yeah. I don't know. If we Did you? <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jovi Levante. Well, it'll be on the podcast name, so okay, they'll, they'll cool. know. But <laughs> um, Yeah, so it is funny because, like, I have, like, a hard time, like, when I introduce people, like, 
everybody knows me by like my real name, which like I don't I don't care. People know that. But like when I introduce myself now, it's like Joe Veet because I am trying to like, you know, I heard a quote that's like treat yourself how you want others to treat you. So whether that's a name or a haircut mm -hmm. or like anything like um, I introduce myself as that to people, then like I am that. Mm -hmm. And like there's people I know now who I've met over like the last year who know me as that mm -hmm. and have no idea about the rest of my life. And I always think about like me growing up, you know, I went to DeSmet because that's what my parents wanted me to do. And like, that's where all my cousins and uncles went. And then I went to Mizzou because it was like the easy decision, whatever, blah, blah. And Joe Veet to me was like, okay, I'm picking this. And like, this is me. And like, this is my identity and what I want to do. And, and what it means is um, it's my great grandfather's name who was, um, it's a really cool story actually. He was born super, super prematurely in a town called St. Jovite, Quebec in, in Canada. And they, he was so premature that they didn't have a name for him and, and they really didn't expect him to live or survive. So, and they were Catholic. So when he survived, they named him Jovite after the St. Jovite of the town. Mm -hmm. That was his name. And then he was Jovite Labonte Sr. There's Jovite Labonte Jr. And then it kept getting passed down. And it's a bunch of my uncle's middle names, a bunch of my cousin's middle names. And I knew my grandma was like obsessed with the name. And I love the way it sounds. Like I, I think phonetically it's amazing. I love the way it looks spelt out and written out. But it just had a lot of meaning to me because it, it comes down from my family. And it was more of like, I want to do this for them. Mm -hmm. And like, let's say, you know, one day everything goes well. And it's like, I'm this big artist. Like to be able to say that that name was Your like taken name. from them, you know, mm -hmm. and like chosen. Um, and then also the last, sorry, <laughs> I know I talk forever. <laughs> but I watched an interview with Cause. You guys know Cause? He's a big, giant contemporary artist. Mm -hmm. K-A-W-S, Cause. I thought this was so crazy because um, somebody asked him one time, where does your name come from? He was like, it has no meaning at all. All it is is that he was like, I knew as a graffiti artist, I was gonna have to write my name day after day after day after day. He was like, I just wanted something that looked cool and sounded cool, like K-A-W-S. He's like, that just looks so cool and sounds so cool. So with all the background and like everything, Jovi, I love it to death, it has so much meaning to me. Mm -hmm. I also just think it sounds cool. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, it, it, looks and it looks It looks cool. like corner, like, cause you use, if you use like your real name or something, you're just like signing it, it's like a right, paper. Right. It's like a, like a grade paper. It's it, like it, it was, doing something. I guess what I would say is like, it was a business decision too. Like yeah. it was, it was like a branding, it was yeah. like a branding element to it too. No, absolutely. Um, that's awesome. I had like another thing that I was gonna ask, but I, I think I forgot. Oh. Shout out Mom's Deli. <laughs> we, yeah, yes. well, we're gonna ask that in a second. I was just there on Saturday. It's oh, so right. good. It's it's so good. I love Mom's Deli. They did a really cool photo shoot there. I think I showed you it of the girls, lady that worked there. So yeah. I wanted to ask, um, so let people know, because this podcast is going to, it's going to be a timeless podcast, but we are going to be doing some events in, uh, in oh, the yeah. fall. So if you just kind of want to let people know um, what events you're planning and, and what they're coming, this might be the first time you're telling people. So yeah, it is. Thank if, you. So if you want to. Oh no, yeah. It, thank you. That's yeah. amazing. Um, I'll just talk about the one, but I'm playing my first art show. So up until this point, I've just kind of been very fortunate to be in shows, you know, Art Mimosa Pancakes or whatever, like in different shows. But this will be my first show that Luke has very generously, like, um, I don't know if I should say that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm using his beautiful space, the office space where the mural is to, um, to do it. So it's, I just love that space so much. So I'm very grateful to like be able to use it. But yeah, I'm doing my first show that's going to have some giant pieces of work, some smaller pieces of work. Like there's one that's dedicated to like my dad that I love. So like, just being able to invite all my family and friends and, and to a show like that is really mm -hmm. special. So that'll be at the end of November. Yeah. 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 There's going to be a lot of things and it's in the grand center arts district. It's going to be really special. Um, but yeah, there's some tricks that he, that he told me, I guess we'll, we'll share them later, but I yeah. think there's going to be something <laughs> special. There's going to be something special on the wall there, but um, last but not least, it is the STL bucket list show. Um, I know we've been on a ton of tangents all episode, <laughs> but it's back to the STL bucket list show. The STL bucket list um, to us means, our favorite spots to go. It's not stuff that we need to check off our bucket list, but it's stuff that we would put on somebody else's bucket list if they were coming here. Right. Um, so your STL bucket list is different. You grew up, like you said, South County, South City, but also West County. Like, yep. Tell us about some of your favorite spots. Where would you take people when they come in town, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. I mean, I just will always shout out, like, I think St. Louis sandwich scene is like <laughs> it is unbelievably good. crazy. I My mean, fave. it's unbelievable. Um, and you have the higher end ones. Like, I kind of like some of the fancy, I call them higher end. I don't yeah. know. Some of the fancier ones, like your gramophone. Yeah, union loafers. Yeah, yeah, like, I love those. But to me, there's nothing like, like growing up in the area that I grew up in, a mom's deli, where it's just like little one room counter, 
meat deli pictures of their freaking italian fit like yeah receipts know, like yeah. you wait a line around the thing you're picking I, up red hot ripplets yeah. right i i always laugh and i tell people when i take that because i take everybody to mom's deli or legrand's shout out to legrand's yeah, too. Those are the two. Yeah, yeah those are i love both those places i've had family work at both of them um i always laugh whenever i take someone to mom's deli i'm like look they have pictures of their italian like grandma <laughs> on the wall I'm like, you know, the food is gonna be amazing. You know like, you know it. They would, they wouldn't put their. Family it's not for aesthetics. Like, that's like right. that's just that's just. It's like authentic. Authentic. Yeah, honor it's and pride. So yeah. yeah, I think um, just support your local businesses. Really, I think it's it's really easy. I'm I'm at fault of it too. Like, we fall for convenience, mm -hmm. and it's easy to go to a big chain that has convenience. But like, I, that's what I love so much about you guys. Like supporting people's dreams, like a family-owned business or a little sandwich shop, like Mom's Deli or whatever. Like. You going in there and like talking with the people who work there and buying a sandwich like makes all the difference in the world. Um, so yeah, little sandwich spots, Mom's Deli, Legrand's, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Wizard's, Frozen Custard, love mm -hmm. that place. Yeah, uh, I love Cybergs. That they're kind of more of a chain at this point. I but know, but like, they're still local. They're a St. Louis chain, yeah. right? Right, right. Yeah. They're just they're it's just fine. huge. They're right, and, but and that's because okay. they kill it, and yeah. they love never it. miss. They never. Don't I have never gone to Cybergs and Been they have disappointed. <laughs> Cygoons are like, I oh, I would take love them. Love them. <laughs> so I actually too. need some in my life like soon. What about like <laughs> a like a date night spot or like an elevated spot? Like you got any spots that you would that you would go to oh, any man. go to's? <laughs> That's so funny. Somebody's listening like, yeah, you took me there. <laughs> oh, um, I, I love uh yeah, my one of my ex-girlfriends, we went to uh what's that place called? What's oh Venice Cafe? Oh yeah. yeah. So actually, like she invited me there. I had never heard of it, and we went there, and I was like, "Wow, this place is amazing." Because mm -hmm. um, it's like the city museum meets like a little bar, right? And I love things like that. It's amazing. Also, shout out the city museum. Like I know we're not talking about that, but yeah, I think the city museum is one of the greatest things to ever happen mm -hmm. to like the city. Mm -hmm. um, and I I think a big part of me being inspired was like growing like going there growing up and being like, "What the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Like you can do this, mm -hmm. right?" So yeah, the city museum. Um, yeah, shout out to all my friends and family too. By the way, if you're watching, <laughs> if I love watching I love here. all you guys. That's cool. Towards the end, um, but yeah, yeah guys, if you, uh, make it this far. <laughs> if you make it this far, yeah, we always say that people are like, yeah, I'm like, well, you know, it's uh, attention spans, you know, they're yeah, like picking it. it up. But your friends and family will be listening, so shout out to the fam. Um, got to meet them, but guys, we're gonna be doing some cool stuff. Um, we're gonna be dropping uh, that event in November is gonna be special. Um, and it's going to be cool to open up the space that we work in every day for something that cool. Yeah, I really um, appreciate it. So, yeah, we're happy to do it. So, other than that, if you want to say anything else or if you have anything on your drop mind. Drop your tag. Oh, yeah, so drop your yeah. tag. Yeah. I'm really just on Instagram at Jovite Labonte, J-O-V-I-T-E, Labonte, L-A-B-O-N-T-E. Um, yeah, that's my Instagram. I want to think of something cool to say, but really just like, <laughs> I don't know, just be nice to each other. That's all I have to say is That's like, a cool thing to say. and one yeah. of the things you mentioned is like supporting local businesses. And one of the things that some, somebody on the show called us out on is we said, Oh, small businesses, like what small business do you support? And it's, it's not small to that person that runs it. Yeah. So like changing your vocabulary where you did as well. You're like, you support call local. us out. Well, no, she just said like, I stopped yeah. doing it. She just said like, oh, I stopped Maybe saying that. And then, I, and then I was like, oh, that's true. Because like people were like, how's your little business doing? And I'm like, right, uh, right. <laughs> you know, so that's just something I want to leave the, the fans with that's listening. So totally. um, episode 80, guys, uh, check us out. Spotify, Apple, YouTube, Google Podcasts. Um, we're going to put it up on Instagram. We're probably going to cut it up, put it on TikTok. Um, you can watch it on YouTube if you guys are listening and you guys want to see us. You know, go tune over to yeah, YouTube. Check so, out my outfit. Uh, yeah, check out the outfit. <laughs> check out the uh, check out the art. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. Today they rep Saint Louis. Yeah, they rep Saint Louis. They rep Saint Louis.